Well, hello, my fiendish followers. It's Eitan, and I think you know where I am. This is Hollywood Forever, the final resting place for so many of entertainment's greatest stars of all time, both in front of and behind the camera. So we're talking about Judy Garland, Douglas Fairbanks, Rudolph Valentino, Marion Davies, Cecil B. DeMille, Mel Blanc, Estelle Getty, music stars like Chris Cornell, Dee Dee Ramone, and that doesn't even begin to address the tens of thousands of people that aren't as famous who are buried here as well. Hollywood Forever used to be called Hollywood Cemetery. It was founded in 1899 by a Nebraska businessman named F.W. Samuelson, who purchased the original 60 acres from Mary Gower, an early Hollywood resident. Samuelson formed the Hollywood Cemetery Association to run it with a board of trustees that included LA movers and shakers like Homer Laughlin and Isaac Van Nuys. In fact, Mary Gower was a thresher of wheat for Van Nuys's father-in-law, Isaac Lankersham. Fun fact, the Gowers are actually all buried here at the cemetery. The first burial here took place in 1901. It was a woman named Highland M. Price. She was the wife of a local blacksmith and many believe that it was her name that gave Highland Avenue its name. From the beginning, the Hollywood Cemetery Association that owned the cemetery pitched the cemetery as a very different kind of graveyard. So this wasn't one of those pre-Victorian graveyards that had a, a old tombstone sticking out every which way. This was what they called a lawn park or a memorial park. It had lush grass, well-kept landscaping. A lot of the graves were flush with the ground or very low off the ground. And uh, the crypts and mausoleums that were there were in these age-old styles that people were familiar with, classical revival styles. So the idea was to make a place that was comfortable for the living to gather, uh, a place that was serene and calming, uh, a place that you could honor your loved ones, but also maybe have a picnic. Part of this was just the trends happening in cemeteries during the day, but it was also a really good way to assuage the locals, who would much rather have something like that than an unsightly uh, gaggle of tombstones sticking up uh, right around their neighborhood. There were other innovations too. You know, as early as 1909, the cemetery introduced the idea of cremation, and the community was so vehemently opposed to it. In fact, it would take another 19 years for the crematorium to uh, finally open for business. There were connections with the Hollywood film industry very early on. So in 1926, Paramount Pictures, the new company that DeMille and Lasky, both of whom are buried at Hollywood Forever, had built up from the ground. It was running out of space in its original lot. And so they purchased 40 acres of land and they moved their entire studio just south of where Hollywood Forever is right now. The 1920s and the 30s was a boom time for the cemetery. They built the memorial right behind me for William Clark Jr., who was an industrialist and major philanthropist who founded the Los Angeles Philharmonic. They built the Masonic Lodge, an Italian Renaissance style edifice. In 1930, they built the Abbey of the Psalms and also Beth Olam, which is a mausoleum reserved for Jewish burials on the west side of the cemetery. In 1939, there was a new owner named Jules Roth who came around and he ushered in over 50 years of uh, really horrible mismanagement. Jules Roth was a convicted criminal who had just gotten out of federal prison a couple years before for swindling people out of a whole lot of money through a bogus oil company. There was very little money spent on its upkeep so over the next few decades, lawns went overgrown, crypts were crumbling. At the same time, Roth barred many racial minorities from being interred here. Famously, he turned away Hattie McDaniel, the first black person to win an Oscar. As you can imagine, none of this was good for business. By the 90s, more people were being disinterred here than actually being interred here. It almost went under completely until it sold in April of 1998. 
The new owners, the Cassidys, were an entrenched dynasty of cemetery and funeral home owners from St. Louis. And it's hard to overstate how much they did to turn this place around. So when they bought it in 1998, it was nearly bankrupt. They poured millions of dollars into a restoration that is still ongoing, fixed up a lot of the damage that had occurred in the 1994 earthquake, and also all the damage from decades of neglect. They put a lot of effort into creating a cultural center out of the Hollywood Forever Cemetery. So they started having concerts in the Masonic Lodge. They brought in Sinespia to have screenings out on the lawn behind the Douglas Fairbanks Memorial. They started the Dia de los Muertos festival here, one of the largest in the entire country. And they also focused on the history of the place by bringing on board Carrie Bible, who has been leading magnificent historical tours of the cemetery since 2002. The new owners have done a lot to try and make Hollywood Forever Cemetery an inclusive place for everybody. You'll see Herb Jeffries, the singing cowboy, buried here. Holly Woodlawn, the trans performer who is part of Andy Warhol's crew. And the owners also tried to uh, make right the historical injustice done against Hattie McDaniel by offering the McDaniel family to disinter her from Angelus Rosedale and bring her here free of charge. The family declined, but there is a lovely Senna's half. The new owners are continuing Hollywood Forever's spirit of innovation. Right now, under construction, is a five-story tall mausoleum on the west side on Gower. And when it's opened in a few months, I've heard it is going to be one of the world's tallest mausoleums with space for something like 30,000 more people. So it's taken Hollywood forever onwards into the future. Thanks for doing LA with me.